Well, hello there. Tonight we are looking at my Frankenstein Vivor diesel heater, which used to be a suitcase type model. It developed a leak in the tank shortly after I got it. Um, the initial run that Viver made of these quad tube um, suitcase toolbox, whatever you want to call them, type heaters, had a pointy sheet metal screws um, up in this area, and I can't remember if it was the display end or the or the intake end that happened to line up with the tank and they wore holes in the side of the tank so when you filled the tank right up uh, it leaked. Viver looked after me 100% on this. I got no problem with them. Their customer service is pristine. Um, so, But this unit, I had already started on this product project so I continued on with it um, and here we are. And what this project is, is it's more than just mounting one of these on the wall. This is the magic that's happening here right now. And that is a heat exchanger <clears throat> to recover a bunch of that exhaust gas without unduly affecting the performance of the heater itself. So, um, let's look at some numbers. Right now, step back and explain this thing a little better we've got the as you saw the coils of, of exhaust tubing going through this portion of it that little hole is just because i needed to put a screw through over here i can cover it with tape later if i need if i feel like i want to but here is where the exhaust tubing exits and goes out up the building everything in this exhaust tubing is all graded downhill so it will all through all the coils the exit of the coils into this portion and as it passes through the wall it's all pointing down hill just enough to drain any condensation that may develop in the tubing so no condensation buildup possible in this setup it drains a hundred percent and then all of this uh, what's all that well, right now, I've got it turned off, so it is actually feeding, chimney feeding the air up through. Uh, the hot air is exhausting through the top here. Uh, cool air is being drawn in the bottom. But, this is a fan. It's a duct booster, HVAC duct booster, that will give us reverse flow so it will then pull from the top exhaust out the bottom discharging the hot air into the cold air at the floor level let's look at some numbers and this thing is sitting on manual lowest heat setting and we have 148 degrees celsius coming out of this point right here that's kind of you know, as close as i can get to discharge temperature out of the machine i mean it's come through this uh, insulated sleeve and i've got the the thermocouple stuffed up into probably about here so pretty good representation of our exhaust gas temperature before the heat exchanger. Then another thermocouple here tucked into the between the uh, overlaying elbow coupler type device and then the other tubing that's inserted into it uh, down in the crack there I've got the thermocouple stuck so we're getting a pretty shielded and realistic reading on the exhaust gas temperature at this point. Note, I am touching this with my finger and not having a problem. I would not touch it there. Because it's 150 degrees Celsius up at the top, 
But down at the bottom, it's already down to 52 Celsius. Now our ambient temperature is uh, thermocouple number three. That's up at the level, hey, it keeps, <laughs> it keeps kind of sagging down on me. There, that's about level with the top of, of the heat exchanger device here. So at that height, our air temperature in the room right now is about 17.4. Down a foot off the floor, where this one is in this pipe, that's this one, is 14.1 degrees. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on this fan and reverse the airflow to come down and out and make it forced air. But we're only going to, we're going to turn it all the way over to low over here uh, top part of the low and our numbers rapidly start to change this one here is dropping drastically as you can see that's the exhaust gas leaving the building so we're extracting more and more energy out of the exhaust. This number, of course, isn't changing because it's way up here. My system has nothing to do with that. The exhaust gas temperature here is pretty constant with whatever the heat setting is. So yeah, this is down here. We're now discharging in a room where the ambient temperature is about 17 degrees. We're now discharging 23 degrees at floor level to get rid of that 14 degree cold air down there. Now, we're going to listen to the enter very entertaining little Chinese gal inside this controller as we turn up the heat. Two gear. Three gear. Four gear. I get a kick out of her. And there we are at max. You can hear it spooling up. It's pretty laggy. It's not like uh, not like the turbine on an F-16. As you can see, this temperature down here is spooling up over 27 degrees already. That's a, and it's, it's honking along pretty good airspeed wise. I mean, it, it's, it's at least as much discharge velocity and probably discharge volume, cubic feet per minute type thing, as a normal floor vent on your in your forced air furnace heating your house. Now, of course, now it's drawing air in here instead of discharging as it does in gravity mode, but it's massively more effective. 
Look at we're 230 some degrees up in here, and we're only 60 degrees leaving the building. That is a big difference. And the six inch pipe is taking air in at the top. Let's see, here's my, uh, which one is this? This is T3, is right here. Same height as, as the altitude that it's taking air in to the heat exchanger at. So it's coming into the heat exchanger at about 17.6 and it's leaving the heat exchanger way down there at floor level to keep my feet warm at 30 degrees Celsius. I can't be happier with this. It's working awesome. This is the kind of the final prototyping stage that it's at right now. I'll tidy up loom and tidy up the, the wiring and the fuel line. I may or may not put a fuel filter in here. I had one in here and it uh, sucked. You know, it leaked, leaked diesel like a sieve. I ended up with a, a tub sitting underneath here to catch the diesel the first day that I ran it like that until I just took it out, threw it away. I've got another one here that I have siliconed up with RTV silicone. I'm going to leave it cure for another day before I test it. Don't know if it's worth it. It's not that hard to keep the diesel clean in these jugs. I may just rely on that. The way the pickup tube goes into the bottom of this thing, it goes in and it kind of does a, a pigtail curl and it sits up just a bit up off the bottom. So if this is the bottom of, pretend we're inside the jug and this is the bottom of the jug, it doesn't sit like this, it sits just like that. Just, just a little bit up off the bottom. So it's not sucking up the, any debris that might be laying on the bottom of the jug. First one of these I did, I ran it on uh, lowest setting, mostly with a considerable number of bursts at full throttle like we're at right now as I was testing and evaluating all this stuff and got over a hundred hours out of a 20 liter container so and in October in north central Alberta Canada it was keeping this place at 15, 16 Celsius, um, 60 degrees Fahrenheit for a week kind of thing. So uh, pretty optimistic that it will be good enough for the winter. Well, anybody who's a Fahrenheit person, I will give you a switch over now to Fahrenheit. You can freeze frame it and extrapolate any numbers that you need. From that, there you go. See, we're getting over 300 degrees Fahrenheit temperature drop through the heat exchanger on the exhaust gases. And 25 degrees temperature increase from ambient to exhaust at floor level. So, again, I couldn't be happier. Being able to run this thing on the mountain mode to compensate for the extra drag of all this tubing here, I think I'm going to be running lean and clean and carbon buildup free. That's my hope. I'll let you guys know later. Bye for now.